today I'm going to show you the very worst and the best way to make carnitas. Let's go! Hello and welcome to Uncle Bill's Kitchen. Today we're going to start with this Boston butt, also known as pork shoulder. It's the upper part of the shoulder and has far less bones than the lower part, which we also called butt. Now we're going to cut this into manageable pieces, but not too small, approximately three by three in size. The heat is actually in the seeds and the white portions of the inner parts of the jalapeno. So if you don't want to eat that hot part, do what I do. Take those seeds out. Also, be careful. Make sure to wash your hands or wear gloves because if you've touched the seeds, we have a tendency to like scratch your nose or your eyes. You don't want to have that happen. Trust me. Okay, this is where I started experimenting just a little bit. I've done a lot of research online, and from what I understand, you could actually use lard as one of the bases for cooking your meat, or you could use a little bit of lard and canola oil, and that'll reduce some of the amount of fat that you're adding into it. Well, let's say healthy fat that we're adding into it. So I chose to go this route, one, because I only had one pound of lard, and it takes a little bit more oil to cover the meat, and two, because I wanted to be a little healthier. So I thought, hey, can't go wrong here. A little bit of lard, a little bit of canola, we're all good.
Okay, now at this point, most of the recipes that I found tried to tell me to get the temperature up to 275 degrees and then let them cook while stirring occasionally so that the bottom meat doesn't burn for about 90 minutes. My problem was I couldn't get the temperature to 275 no matter what I tried to do. It was either way over or not enough. And when it wasn't enough, it was around 215 to 220. And then when it was over, it was over 300. So it was a real madhouse here trying to get these temperatures dialed in. Up until this point, I had been coming back every 10 minutes to stir the meat to ensure that that meat was getting off the bottom and coming over to the top and not browning too much. Uh, what I did notice also was that the onions that I placed in there actually all started to caramelize and come together at the bottom of the pot, sticking to the bottom of the pot also. So I think that also had some hindrance to the temperatures problems that I was having. So we were at around 212 to 220, never getting to that 275. Always either between 212 to 220 and then over 300. So this is what we're looking at now. And it doesn't look too bad, but uh, I'm a little worried. At this point, I had let the carnitas go for another 10 or 15 minutes. And they had actually come up to temperature the internal temperature of the carnitas were actually way more than I expected. They were around 195 to 200 on average. And usually I would like to pull them around 180, let them keep cooling, uh, cooking while they rest. So a little worried, but it looks like they are okay. The exterior is a little dark, but uh, they have a nice softness to the interior. Let's see what happens. Okay, so as you can see here, the exterior is, shall we say, charred. That's the nice chef -y way to say it, right? Uh, this stuff is really well done. Uh, the flavor profile, however, is point blank perfect. Just overcooked, you just cooked it too long. The interior is a little bit chewy, but the truth is I ate every last one of these because the flavor was that good. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and try to do these again I'm going to do it a different way. Let me know what you think. Okay, so same as before, we're going to take the meat and we're going to chop it into two inch cubes this time instead of three.
Okay, when I talk about an explosion of flavor, let me tell you, this has to be the best carnitas I've ever had. And I know, I know traditionally carnitas need to cook for five to seven hours in lard, and it's gotta be outdoors with all this juice and all this stuff on it. But let me tell you, baking it this way for three and a half hours at 275 softens it up, and then broiling it gives the top layer this crunchiness that is so satisfying. And then just adding a little bit of onion, cilantro, lime, and a little of the uh, green salsa. Oh, oh, so good. You have to try this. Hey everyone, thanks for watching this far. If you enjoyed the content that I've provided today, please make sure to like and subscribe so that you can receive updates on every single video that we release. Also, we've been trying a couple different things, trying to make our content a little more engaging like what I'm doing, let me know in the comment section down below. If you'd like to support our channel, consider becoming a Patreon member. If you'd like to just give a one-time donation, coffee is the way to go. Links in the description below.